my boys, YT Dan, back at it again with another video. And it feels great to say that. I've been out of it for a minute, and I will just let you know that um, I'm going to be back making regular content on this channel. So if you do want to watch more videos from me, just feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, do the YouTube thing so you can catch these new videos and live streams, etc. In this video, a complete breakdown of my Tri-Brigade branded deck. Um, now, it's not even just really a Tri-Brigade branded deck. It's more Tri-Brigade branded synchro because the small synchro engine that is in my deck does not appear all the time because I only run four cards to facilitate this engine. But if they are seen and I do get to use it, it's a real powerful extender that I can uh, pretty much exploit at any given time uh, in my opponent's turn. So it's pretty amazing uh, to me. I really enjoy playing uh, this combo. So basically, um, I'm gonna show you in this video combos for both Fusion and uh, Tri-Brigade. The Tri-Brigade combo does both Link and Synchro Summoning and then ends on at least five to six points of interaction with your opponent, which I think is amazing. Um, you know, typically your opponent can't get out of that without providing some sort of lopsided advantage card, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplets, um, super polymerization, something like that. So typically when I'm playing against my opponent, my tri-brigade combo may be my opening combo um, to just kind of hit them with and go into game two. But when we go into game two, they should be kind of more prepared to kind of break boards or maybe they have more hand traps. And that's when I go into the fusion option, which is less resources and typically only costing one maybe 1.5 cards in the hand. All right, my boy, so I appreciate you for watching this video. Catch me in the next video live stream. It's gonna be something coming at any time, and the only way you're gonna catch me is if you hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you next time. So a lot of times in deck lists, I don't really see a lot of people going through the extra deck and giving a real explanation of each card and why it's in there. I think that's really important because in order for you to understand a deck and how it works, you need to really understand where the main focus is. And for this deck and many other decks, the main focus is an extra deck. So it's really important to understand what is extra in the extra deck, like what is core to the combo and then also what is necessary or what room can be made to add more spice. So. The fusion part of this deck, which is using branded fusion, has a combo line that goes Albion. We go into Lubellion. Then we go into Mirror Jade. Then we go into Beast Eyes Pendulum Dragon. And then we send with Mirror Jade's effect, Bree Grand. This is the entire fusion line. In this deck, this is the one fusion line of play the one opening turn from just one brand of fusion, you get to use all five of these monsters. And also we're using a synchro monster in this combo, um, Garden Rose Maiden, which facilitates the summoning of Mirror Jade. So it's actually pretty spicy. And if we get our combo extender, we can go into Chi Ying, we can go into the Soul Sword Sovereign, and this is completed combo for the fusion line so technically where i would say there's room for spice is this card you know what level 10 monster do you want to synchro summon we can talk more about that as we get into the second half of this video now on that same regard just speaking about um using the extra deck efficiently on that same level, we're talking about um, the Tri-Brigade combo. So the Tri-Brigade line works. You know, we have Centaur Mina because this is gonna be our combo extender that goes into Borlow Savage. And um, it's very consistent in the Tri-Brigade combo. So I would say it's pretty reliable to, you know, have these two as a combo. And then we have the Blossom, the Bear Broom, the two Shurigs, and then depending if this is the first turn or the third turn, 
our ending link for. If it's the first turn, you're gonna get Avalusa. If it's the third turn or above, you're gonna get the access code for game, my boy. So pretty much this is the same thing. And where would you say there's room? There's room here to switch for your level eight. You don't have to go into Borlo Savage, but I like Borlo Savage. Other cards that I went into was um, Cyber Slash Harpy, and I used the uh, Harpy Lady's um, trap card, the Harpy's Feather Storm, to blow out my opponent for using effects for an entire turn, which can be really powerful. Um, I kind of leaned away from that as I kind of created the branded version of this deck, but um, it's still a viable option. You can always easily go into um cyber slash harpy which is a wind wing beast and you can play that card the tri-brigade monsters also have a wind wing beast and nerval and then of course there's other wind wing beasts that you can play as well that will help make that harpy's feather storm live so it's definitely something to consider um you know going forward and then again if we have combo extenders and we have hop air or some other level two link we can go into Chi Ying, and Chi Ying can be used in this line of play as well with the Shu Rigs. So Shu Rig is banishing, Chi Ying goes off, and then also um, Mirror Jade is banishing, and then Chi Ying goes off. So it's uh, pretty spicy for the extra deck, and now let's take a look at the uh, main deck core. All right, so now we're at the point where we can talk about the core of this deck. Um, I like to really go over the, the deck in terms of like starters. And then after I go through the starters, we're going to talk about, um, you know, the combos and everything else. Um, so stick. So if you like, you know, interested in watching the combos, you can stick around for the rest of the video. Um, but of course, here is just the broad idea of the deck and kind of how it goes. So when I talk about starters, I like to just talk about everything that happens in turn one and in turn one your objective is either to set up a, a board where your opponent will have trouble um or causing your opponent to you know not be able to play the game or um if you happen to be going second your turn one is to do as much damage to your opponent in terms of interaction with them um to pretty much stop them from going so i count hand traps that you can play on the first turn as starters I know that might not be 100% correct, but in my mind, that's how I like to categorize it. So the first three I'm using is infinite and permanence. So you have a nice start there in terms of uh, hand traps to stop your opponent. Um, and then of course, we're using two ash blossom. And then that's pretty much it in terms of starters for my hand traps. So these are, t I consider these to be hand traps too. Cross out designator and then also called by the grave. But this is definitely for when I'm playing. So either I'm playing on the first turn and this is good, or I'm playing on the second turn and um, these are really bad. <laughs> but I main deck those because it gives us options to easily side out cards for the side deck. You know, you can run tactics or anything. And I think that that's pretty much fine. Now, uh, we run three engines. We run a Tri-Brigade engine, we run a Branded engine, and then we also run a Synchro engine. Um, the Synchro engine does do, do some fusion and can also be a combo extender that can put, help push for game as well. Um, but we'll get more into that as we talk about the combos. You know, if you go over the main combos, each combo you can do from that are just derivative combos of the full combo. Um, but anyway, back again to the starters. So looking here, you have fractal, 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 fractal. You got five fractals that you're playing and then three rescue cats. You want to remember you want to tilt your opponent by playing an original print common rescue cat uh, for a game. You know, so if you have cross out designator and two rescue cats in your hand, you want to summon this one. So um, anyway, um, the reason why we're going to just look at these starters is because regardless if you start with a Fractal or a Rescue Cat, you can complete the tri Brigade combo and go full combo. Um, we do not run all Mirage, so um, technically everything else is an extender from this point on, which would mean you're running one Karis, you're running um, two Kit. Oh, I thought I was playing three Kit in here. Uh, so I actually downed the kits to two kits. Um, I normally play three kits because off a of rescue cat search, you want to have an extra uh, kit sometimes because you can use the rescue cat to go into um, uh, Bear Broom. 
but if you only have two and you went through one line using fractal then you won't be able to go into Berbrum. um and then of course you have two nerval one revolt and then you have the two hand traps which i didn't include here for hand traps because these two hand traps are searchable by the tri brigade combo going full combo and at the end of the day um they're not applicable all the time so um i don't really count these as hand traps i just count these among the tri brigade uh combo pieces and then <clears throat> Now, looking at the uh, branded spells or the branded uh, starters here, you have three Spriggan's Kit, you have three branded Fusion, and then in, for our targets, we're running Stay Sailor, Fallen of Albaz, and that's it. We don't run anything else, and we only run one Fallen of Albaz. I have played this at two, but honestly, two is too many because of how we play the Fallen of Albaz branded combo you can easily recycle the Fallen of Albaz numerous times, and you'll see that as we get into the combo video. Um, and then also Branded Retribution and Branded Lost. Um, branded Lost is not really my favorite card. Like, it's okay. It can be searched out if you're running multiples and all that good stuff, and your opponent can't interact with you, blah, blah, blah. But I kind of honestly feel that one is enough because it can be searchable by using Spriggan's kit and because it's searchable by using Spriggan's kit there's no real point um in running extra because if you ever have two it's way too many so um to close off here um we have three horse of the floral knights but one of them is a noble knight shield bearer this card can double as a search for horse of the floral knights or hop Ear Squadron, so technically we run two Hop Ear Squadron, and we're getting a lot of value out of this card. So this card stands for two cards and itself. So this is like three cards, depending on what type of hand you have. Then you have the Hop Ear Squadron, then you have the Spear Holder, and then of course the two Horse of the Floral Knights. Now you can also use Horse of the Floral Knights to fuse with the Shield Bearer to make um, the uh, Centaur Mina, but honestly, if uh you don't plan on using the synchro summon then that would be a great play you know i couldn't imagine why you would do one over the other and not you know like continue into other things but i'm just saying it is a possibility so we combine these three engines with our hand traps to make some spicy combos for both turn one and turn two giving our opponent a tough time to try to get in there for game my boy and uh check out the combos and uh yeah All right, boys, now it's time for some combos. I promised that earlier in the video and I wanted to show you guys just pretty much what the deck had to offer. Already shuffled up, so let's go. We're gonna do first five cards. Oh, these are upside down, so. Um, Tri Brigade Revolt, Hot Ear Squadron, uh, Spriggan's Kit, cross out designator and a horse of the floral knights so this is actually a pretty good hand to demonstrate the fusion combo you know it's not perfect we would have liked it to be a little bit different but what we did actually get this really good is the cross out designator like i mentioned before or maybe i didn't mention it not sure um ash is really prevalent in this meta right now um because there's just lots of good ash targets and ash is just really um a nice universal hand trap so of course that's why we run the designator so how you would play a hand like this we would normal summon the spriggan's kit and spriggan's kit effect activates it lets you shuffle a card back into the deck and then once you shuffle that card back into the deck you can grab a brand diffusion so of course we're going to use tri brigade revolt because right now we're not targeting any um tri brigade type combos we're going down the branded combo line so we're going to go ahead and put this card back and then we're gonna put the brand diffusion um, into our hand. Now you can also, if you have brand diffusion, use um, Spriggan's Kit's effect to search other branded cards like branded retribution or even other branded cards like branded lost. We do play like one copy of each, but um, you know, like I said before, we just need to make sure we stick to grabbing the fusion for now. 
All right, so now we have branded fusion um, and we have used our normal summon. So uh, we won't be able to do much more here except for fusion summon. And then obviously we're gonna play the branded fusion, which lets us pick two cards from our deck as fusion materials and send them to the graveyard uh, to activate the fusion effect. So what's cool about this is we open with the cross out designator. We're gonna imagine our opponent use Ash to stop us, we're gonna chain cross out designator and we're gonna go ahead and banish the target for cross out designator, which is uh, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And so we play two in, in the deck and I like to play a common one and some kind of higher rarity. Um, when I banish stuff across our designator, always banish the common one. Um, I don't know why, I just like to do it like that. And then now we're gonna do, um, I guess I'll put it right here so you can see it. And now we're going to do, and these are relevant to our banished pile. So I guess I'll keep them right here so you can understand. So this is a uh, graveyard banished pile. Um, yeah, so we're gonna send the two cards from the graveyard for the branded fusion. Um, and the two cards we're gonna pick here are gonna be our main combo pieces for our branded combo, which is gonna be Stay Sailor. And then we're also going to send, of course, a copy of The Fallen of Albaz. Now, I only play one Fallen of Albaz. You'll see why um, it's very recyclable. So we're gonna go ahead and put those two cards um, out. And we're going to put these two cards in the graveyard to do the fusion summon. So our target for that is going to be we just go through here real quick. We're gonna go ahead and grab Albion, the branded dragon. Now, um, I would say you probably have to summon this guy in defense position. Um, summoning in attack mode is okay, but people run lightning storms. Some people run it even main deck. So you got kind of got to remember that um, to put your stuff in defense mode, especially if you're going first. Um, and then uh, because we um, use Stay Sailor as a target for this fusion. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and activate Stay Sailor's effect, and then we're gonna chain Albion's effect. Um, so Stay Sailor's gonna go ahead and let us send a card from the extra deck to the grave. Um, so we're gonna send a Synchro card, which is also a dark monster. Uh, so you're sending Garden Rose made into the grave. Um, and then because you have the Garden Rose made in the grave, and you just activate the effect of Albion, you're gonna go ahead and fuse your summon by banishing Garden Rose Maiden and banishing the Fallen of Albaz. And then you're gonna go ahead and fusion summon yet again for Lubellion. This is actually my favorite Fallen of Albaz fusion monster. So you go ahead and summon Lubellion in defense position. Now Lubellion's effect makes you discard a card to activate his effect. Um, to summon another monster, then you're gonna spin the cards that you have in the graveyard or banish back into the deck. So we're gonna discard Horse of the Floral Knights, um, and then we're gonna shuffle back um, the Fallen of Albaz and the Garden Rose Maiden. So Garden Rose Maiden goes extra back, Fallen of Albaz goes back to the main deck. You shuffle that up real nice, and then we're gonna go ahead and fusion summon yet again for, where's it at? Da, 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 da. For a mirror jade. So now we got mirror jade on the field. We have, um, you got mirror jade, Lubellion, and Albion with uh, Spriggan's kit on the field. So now you have these four monsters on the field. And in your opponent's turn, you're gonna have a banish. Um, of course, it's a non-target banish. And then of course, a search for a tri brigade card. Um, and then also we're going to have some more interaction with Hop Ear Squadron, which is gonna give us synchros in our opponent's turn, but that would be a minimum of just two um, interactions with our opponent if I didn't have one more combo for you. Now, this is a secret technique, my boys, very secret technique. Nobody does this or knows about this. So we're gonna go ahead now and continue. You're gonna fusion summon you, you with your Spriggan's kit and your Albion. And remember, because we play Branded Fusion, we're locked into Fusion Summoning, so we can't do any more summoning. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and summon out a Beast Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Now, the reason why you wanna do this is because we're gonna activate Albion's effect, which is gonna let us 
um, set a branded card at the end of our turn, which is happening now. Uh, search the deck for branded retribution, and you're going to set that face down. Now, what is interesting about this hand now is like a it's a really good setup uh, because obviously we did not open with a tri brigade card, but because we didn't open with a tri brigade card, um, the we don't have the Macquarie. Typically, if you open with any tri brigade card except for um, Karis you can uh, end on Macquarie um, with all these cards, but because we didn't have that, we're just ending, um, you know, not a plus, not a minus, but many interactions. So first we have a non-target banish here. We have a chain into a synchro summon from our hand, and then we also have branded retribution. Now you gotta keep in mind that our graveyard is pretty robust at this moment. Our graveyard has in there um, the Albion, and then also um, we put the Fallen of Albaz back into the deck, so we can definitely go into more of a branded combo continuing, but branded retribution um, needs either two monsters to be in the grave or one monster on the field to be spun back to use its effect. Um, and also what's really cool is now in your opponent's turn, you have two options for Hoppier Squadron. Now in my extra deck, I'm only using one of the two options because I think it's way more viable. So I'm using Soul Sword, Supreme Sovereign of the Chiging. Pretty much what you do is um, activate your um, Mirror Jade's effect to banish a card and then also chain to that, hop your squadron's effect. And you're going to Synchro Summon with the Lubellion. Send Lubellion to the grave and then you can bring out the um, Supreme Sovereign. Now, when you, this card hits the field, you're gonna get your banish with Mirror Jade and then you're also gonna get a second banish with this card and then also banish a card from the graveyard, which is really good. And then of course, you also have a um, negation on any type of card that was special summon a monster, but also you don't have to go into this card. You can also go into a bear in the floor as well. Um, which I just decided to use this uh, because this card works better with Shoe Rig and it also works better with Mirror Jade. So it just works better with both of the main combo lines in the deck. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this particular combo and this particular hand. So it gives you multiple interactions. And then of course, um, after you get your Banish, your Banish is going to be using Bree Grand. That's also another card that you can shuffle back in with Branded Retribution. Um, and then, you know, once you shuffle those cards back in, if you shuffle these two cards back in, you have the entire um, Branded combo um, reactivated and uh, rejuvenated now because you still have uh, the Fallen of Albaz in the deck along with two Branded Fusions. So, you know, it's just a really good combo to open up on the first turn. You can go crazy if you open up with a Tri Brigade, but if you don't open up with a Tri Brigade, you'll just be using um, either something like um, uh, Crossout Designator to stop an Ash, or maybe you'll have an Ash in your hand. You're always gonna, gonna have, at the end of this combo, two interactions at a minimum, unless you had to use something like Crossout Designator. So it's a pretty good combo. Um, starting off here with Branded with some interesting tech that you have never seen, my boy. And uh, yeah, let's check out another combo. Now, honestly, what I like about this deck is that we have two main branching combos, which is the Branded Fusion combo. And also we have the um, Tri Brigade combo that also parlays into a Synchro combo. They can both be extended with Hot Beer Squadron, which makes it pretty amazing. You know, it's, it's never brick when you see it. That's why we only play one within our um, Synchro engine. And then also, um, you just got a lot of different tech options depending on what the meta is. And honestly, a, a Omni Negate uh, works really well if you use something like uh, Baron de Floor. Um, it works really good. And then also, if you're using Baron de Floor, you can actually reset um, your Omni Negate with Baron de Floor by using its effect to go back into the extra deck and then bringing um, Centarmina back from the grave. And then Centarmina can. Um, bring out a level two tuner and then you can just maybe play a level two tri brigade or a level two monster and synchro back up into baron and then now you have an omni negate ready but you probably wouldn't have to do all of that because if you could do all that you probably could have just made access code talk and attack for game but if for some reason you couldn't do that 
it is an option. So let's see what we got here. We just did a pile shuffle. Let's see if we can draw a tri-brigade hand. Well, that looks like a tri-brigade hand. Um, two, yep, it's a tri-brigade hand. Yeah, so in a tri-brigade hand, if you wanna win with the tri-brigade combo in this deck, all you need is Fractal and two other beasts, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, anything. These other two cards are irrelevant. They don't really matter because you can work out your whole combo by just using um, these cards alone, um, especially if you do draw into something like a Rescue Cat because Rescue Cat is always going to be a Bear Broom because you can get um, two kits from the deck. We do play three kits. So if you if you see Rescue Cat, you can always turn this into Bear Broom. And then if you want to continue the combo you know you you're using bear broom you're using blossom to make your uh link four and then of course you would be um using the uh monster rescue search from shoe rig which will be horse of the floral knights to make your um um uh borlo savage so actually to demonstrate we're gonna you know, we're gonna take a peek at these two cards so it's a fractal and a crow so this is definitely a trapper game hand but we're just gonna leave these cards like this um uh for the sake of the example so let's just activate um the uh fire formation tinky and then that's gonna let us go and search the deck for fractal and then you're gonna play the fractal dump the kit and then the kit's gonna let you dump the nerval and then the Nerval lets you add Karis to the hand. All right, so you know how Tri Brigade works. Um, you've seen it uh, all these times in Master Duel, my boy. So now we have our hand built up. We have our grave built up. So I'm just gonna keep this here for demonstration purposes again. Um, this is our grave now. Now we're gonna discard the summon. So basically you're gonna drop Spriggan's kit because we're not using Spriggan's kit this time. So dropping Spriggan's kit, you're gonna banish the four and then you're gonna go ahead and summon out Shoe Rig. Ominous Omen. Now you're not gonna activate the effect of banish obviously, but you're gonna go ahead and link to, oopsie, you're gonna go ahead and link to and then summon out the Blossom. Now, Shoe Rig's effect activates in the graveyard, lets you search the deck and grab a uh, Horse of the Floral Knights. Search and grab Horse of the Floral Knights. Then you're gonna use Blossom's effect to summon Horse of the Floral Knights. Now, I would not normal summon it because obviously if they have Nibiru, that this will be killed and you won't be able to use it. So you want to use this effect first. And if they got Nibiru, just let them hit Nibiru. Then you still have a normal summon play. And don't forget, we got these two cards in our hand. Remember, these two cards don't matter as long as you opened up with Fractal and any two Beast, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, you know, the cards that work for this deck. Uh, so we, we special summoned that card. And because we special summoned it, we can go ahead and search our deck and add the um, Spear Holder. And Spear Holder goes there. So now we can fuse with any Light Warrior to make um, Centarmina. So we're gonna go ahead and fuse these two together. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop Centarmina here. Um, and then we're gonna activate Centarmina's effect. And then we're going to bring back the Spear Holder. Spear Holder turns into a Deflora Tuner. And then we're gonna go ahead and Synchro Summon and bring out um, Savage Dragon. Then Savage Dragon's effect equips from the graveyard. Bam. So now you have the equip on Savage Dragon. Now you have your negate live. I actually did this in tournament and my opponent activated uh, Nibiru at the end of the main phase when I ended my turn. Uh, well, when I was attempting to end the turn, um, then I just negated with um, Savage and they were like, no way you can't do that. And I'm like, no. If I have my negates active, I can't stop Nibiru. And we actually had to call a judge because they didn't believe me. And then they found out that they were wrong on that. And then it was like, oof. So that was pretty funny. So don't forget that. Um, if you know, if you're gonna hit this with Nibiru, you gotta do it before the uh, equip hits. If the equip hits and you get the tokens, Nibiru can be negated. Um, so definitely you can activate Nibiru in 
response to his summon. But after this effect resolves, it's too late. So now we still have our normal summon and we can just normal summon the rescue cat. Now, because I told you we were just gonna keep these cards in our hand, they didn't matter what they were. You know, typically they're gonna be hand traps and we do have one hand trap, which is DD Crow, which is really good. Um, but what we can do here, um, instead of summoning rescue cat and tributing it and doing bear room off of just uh, two monsters and then going into an Appaloosat two, what you would want to do is summon out fractal and then banish because this is your graveyard now banish these two so then you banish these two and then you're going to go ahead and summon out barbram now this is completing the combo this is full combo because these other two cards one of them was a hand trap now you're going to actually make every card that you have an interactive card in your opponent's turn which if you understand a matchup or understand um, an opponent's deck, it makes it really easy to beat your opponent. Um, so you gotta have strong knowledge of the game. And that's something that I, being 100%, I do lack that. I, I don't have a full knowledge of the game enough to make the best plays at all times. I can make some really good plays, but as I'm learning, you know, there's clearly some mistakes that can be made. And even my opponents say, your board was amazing. Your combo was great but you just made the wrong move at this point. But next time, this is how you get out of it. So a lot of people actually take the time to explain to me kind of why you lost type of thing. And that explanation helps me to uh, get better at the game. So now we're gonna go ahead and use all three of these. So you're gonna use this as one material, use this as one material, use this as two materials. You're gonna link four to summon out Appaloosa the Goddess Bow. So now you have Appaloosa the Goddess Bow, you have Borlo Savage with four uh, Omni Negate tokens on it. So you have Appa at three and this at four. Uh, when I did this to my opponent that had the Nibiru, they was like, so what you're telling me right now is you got seven negates live? And then I was like, well, no, I have three and one. They like, so you have seven negates. They couldn't get over it, it was really funny. Um, <laughs> so now we're gonna use um, Chainlink one, Chainlink two, we're gonna use Bear Broom and Blossom. Um, and the reason why we do it like this is because, you know, if we draw the card, you can draw in the Tri-Brigade Revolt, which is hilarious that it actually was on top. I wasn't planning that, <laughs> but you can draw into Revolt and you wanna get the opportunity to uh, put, put that back and then, you know, use this and then go ahead and swap it out. Cause you never know, something could get negated and um, at the end of the day, you want to end with maximum interactions. So now um, that this combo is complete, we're going to set the revolt. And now you can see on my opponent's turn, I have three monster effect negates, one non-target banish, and one graveyard banish. So that's already five interactions. And then um, Borlo Savage is going to be six interactions. So technically, I have an interaction one for one for every card they can play unless some card prevent provides them lopsided advantage that i can't negate such as forbidden droplets or um uh super polymerization um those cards really hurt a lot but you know at the end of the day you got to have it on um that turn like if you don't have it on that turn then um you lose <laughs> so you know if, if they don't have it it just kind of is what it is so now there is one thing like one more thing i do want to share about this combo you know all this combo is great going first but what happens if you're going second you do the same combo but instead of ending on Appaloosa, you'll end on access code talker and it doesn't even cost the same so technically you would end on a board like this and going second um attacking into your opponent and then of course you got the one card that you drew from going second so let's just say you went in like this this is pretty much what your board would look like so um yeah so outside of that you know that's pretty much it in a nutshell you know that explains like pretty much the entire deck you know i've been on a journey with this tri brigade deck for a really long time and i will definitely say that after dueling and figuring out the deck and figuring out the combos and figuring out um some little niche points where i can even improve the deck and add new combos i really feel 
really accomplished and competent and confident that, you know, I should be able to do really good in my locals. You know, the only thing that is a true um, test for me is how well do I know the matchups and that and that is going to be a challenge no matter what uh level of skill you are so you know i'm still getting used to the game and getting ready to get back in there for game so i appreciate y'all for checking out this video as always my boys um thanks again for watching and keep it day. <laughs>